Game started. All right. Ayo Ayrton Jr. Ayrton Jr. from Brazil. Uh, D5. D4, rather. I played E4 last couple games. Got a French and a weird opening. So let's let's play D4, D5. Ah, Slav defense. So I play the Knight F3 <coughs> to stop the E5 idea. And let's go ahead and play all, all four knights, or th two knights out. Um, so with the Fianchetto, um, I don't know if I want the bishop outside the pawn chain or not. I'm going to I usually play with e3, <laughs> and uh, so I'm going to do that here. This is just a slower a slower setup against the Slav. We put an e3. You're going to play e4 later, most likely. Just try and grab some more space in the center, but you're going to take your time, and especially since he's got this uh, fianchetto here against the d pawn, you have to be careful you don't weaken the d pawn fatally. So another idea in this position, I guess, is to uh, play h4, h5, just try and undermine the king's side. Let's do that. Let's put the queen here on e2. If he takes, I'm just going to take with the bishop. I'm not going to bother with playing b3 here. Can I play e4 now? <clears throat> or should I try this h4 idea? Well, the problem is by the time it goes to h5, there's nothing behind it. I haven't got a rook on the h file, so my bishop is in the wrong square. So I guess e4 is the main idea here. So e4 takes, knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes, and then knight to f6 is probably the intended play here, then my bishop will drop back. I'll have a couple pawns in the center and uh, an open line for the dark squared bishop, so I think this won't be too bad. Okay, is there any tactic against the bishop there? No, no <laughs> skewers or forks. I guess it's okay. I was just expecting, yeah, knight f6. And then I'll drop all the way back to c2. And then the queen can go to d3 later, maybe, to make a battery. Um, but I still have to figure out how to soften up. I need to soften up the king side some. Well, I'll put the queen on d3 right away just to uh, unpin the knight. Ah. So, um, black has voluntarily given me the bishop pair, which is usually an advantage. And um, so let's, uh, I can place the bishop on uh, g5 and put rooks on uh, d1 and e1. Seems like the logical continuation. Uh, this, this pawn, well, I've got rook. I've got rook d1 to defend the pawn. I was just saying this pawn is loose and some knight move like that would, uh, <clears throat> would attack the uh, pawn with his bishop. So I might want to play, um, I might want to play b3 at some point. Just open up this, uh, diagonal so there's no targets on it so that if I push um, d5 here then it's not hitting the b pawn so when I play b3 now it also shuts out his uh, <clears throat> shuts out his knight let's see and my bishop uh, can get into e7 maybe at some point maybe rookie one pawn to um, D5. Takes, takes, takes. My bishop is hanging hmm, from the queen. So I have to prepare. Well, I'll have to play rook e1 and bishop to um, b1, I guess. And then I can consider d5. 
But uh, this is just a position where white's a little bit better. I should be. <laughs> I'll qualify that. I'm not an expert. so. <laughs> uh, but uh, the advantages white has here are a little more space with this pawn structure and uh, the two bishops. And I don't see that uh, black has any great tactical pressure. Although he could, he could uh, put a rook on uh, d8 right now. Let's see. It's been a while since the last move. Let me make sure. Okay, no, he's still there. Okay, rookie one. That was my plan. <coughs> And bishop b1, uh, I still don't see anything wrong with that. I think uh, it would have been more interesting to play rook to d8 for uh, black. Try and just force something to happen with this deep one right away. I'd probably be forced to play a defensive move, like maybe the bishop back to uh, e3. Okay, so now I'm set up. Now I can push ahead with um, d5, and I think I should. <clears throat> After d5, he gets to move his knight forward. That's one thing. Knight to... Uh, okay, so um, the bishop is getting chased. <laughs> can the, bishop, the bishop can go to uh, e7 here, rook to e8. And uh, then what? I haven't quite prepared things here. Uh, if I had already pushed on with c5, which happens sometimes, then e7 to d6 with the bishop would have been interesting. Okay, so let's drop the bishop back to this diagonal then. Hitting the queen and uh, also maybe helping to control the uh, uh, e5 square. So if I play d5, he can't push on with e5 because it takes... Now he can... I play <clears throat> if I play d5 and he plays e5, I have to retreat the bishop then. I could go here with the queen first, asking him if he intends to defend the h-pawn. Uh, he does. Now is, is h4, h5. Now h4, h5 is an idea because this... Uh, G pawn is pinned. Ah, but the queen can take it. Hmm. Supporting h4, h5. Okay, so his knight's going to be able to take there. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay. Is uh, d4 an idea here? If I play d5, rather, he plays e5, I take it. If I play d5, he takes, I take, he takes. And uh, it's well defended, so he wins a pawn. Hmm, okay, bishop here, maybe. if it's possible to get a rook up and over. <clears throat> well, I'd have to get rid of the knight first. Maybe I want to get rid of the knight. So h4, then exchange the knight, and then play h5. Would open up some lines there. Okay, so he goes to that Square. Let's see. Uh, the exchange of uh, bishop I'm not too worried about. Let's just go here. Maybe I could play um, g4, then h4 here. Uh, but once again, uh, <clears throat> the queen can just take the h-pawn. Uh, so the queen comes out. 
Okay, I can take here. And play rook to um, rook to e five as possible, chasing the queen. Let's see where the queen goes. Nowhere, but isn't this dangerous? Okay, this pawn is defended. There's no check. Ah, but pawn to um, pawn to g4 does not really threaten the knight because <laughs> the g pawn is bent. So let's play king to h1 to threaten uh, g4. Let's see. He can play f3. I can take. He can play f3 now, which would be annoying. Or he can go there. Okay, so that hits his queen, and but it hits my queen at the same time. So I take his queen, he takes my queen, and it's my turn. And my rook is, is kind of trapped there, really. So um, if I go here, where's the queen going? Queen has no squares on this diagonal, no squares on this line. Needs to retreat back on this diagonal, I guess. Yeah, okay, so that's um, all right. And um, maybe f4. The knight could come in here, the queen could come in here, right? So f4. This knight looks a bit funny over here, but it does control g, uh, g2 and f3, annoyingly. And um, if I can, maybe I can play... Um, maybe I can play uh, g5, g5 hitting the queen and the pawn. Pawn takes pawn takes, queen needs to move, and then I can uh, maybe finally grab that knight. As it stands now, the knight has no moves, so maybe I finally have tied up my opponent. So you can see, still in this position, white has more space, and black's pieces are kind of huddled up over here. So hopefully... This is uh, one way to convert a space advantage into a win. <laughs> I always have trouble with that, actually. It's one of those things they teach you, you know, it's good to have that space, but um, how do you convert it to a win? You have to just keep on putting the pressure on. So what ideas, uh, you know, a pawn move like um, g4 would probably, oh no, g g six here to g5 is not possible because of the bishop so the bishop is serving a useful role the rook is working the queen is working this rook is not really working well it was protecting the d pawn at critical times so just at the moment it doesn't appear to be doing anything but um okay so now if i play uh, g5 it, the queen doesn't have to move it doesn't come with a tempo But I can play f5. f5, pawn takes, pawn takes, knight takes, bishop takes, check. And uh, I've won a pawn and I've opened up some lines here, right? No. <laughs> well, I haven't won a pawn, but at least I've opened up some lines. Oh, I've won a piece if he takes with the knight. Let's give it a shot. And if he tries uh, 
f6 to evict my knight, I can take on e6. And if he does nothing, maybe I can play rook to uh, f1 and put more pressure on the f file if he doesn't do anything. Okay, took with the pawn. Now I have a threat of um, f6 with a check, a discovered check on the king and an attack on the queen. So that's pretty dangerous. So if he doesn't take, if he takes, I win the knight. If he doesn't take, he needs to move the queen or the king or block the pawn or counterattack my queen. I suppose that's possible. Rook to g8. Here, check. A rook could block. And that would just win the exchange. Well, no, then I would take the queen. Then he would take my queen, and I would take his rook. I'd still be a piece up. Okay, so I think finally I have crashed through. Okay, so the king moves, yeah. So there is no check. The knight is not hanging. <laughs> Hmm, mm hmm, what to do? If I take on uh, e6, pawn takes e6, just pawn takes, then I have uh, rook h5 hitting the uh, pawn and hitting the uh, knight. And if he plays rook g8, then rook takes his checkmate. So let's try this. And he plays rook g8 here. Mm. That's pretty good. Okay, so pawn takes, rook takes queen, pawn takes rook check. Queen takes, rook takes, check, and then I take his rook. So hopefully this is winning. <laughs> it's the pawn. Oh, he just takes it. Ah, 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 ah. Okay. So what else? Oh, he gave up his. Um, he gave up his knight when he took it. So if I take, am I getting mated here? There is. Uh, ah, there is this uh, queen f3 check. Okay, this stops him from taking my queen momentarily because the rook is pinned. So he can take back with the rook or the queen. If all the material comes off, I'm a pawn up because <laughs> I have a I won a pawn in that uh, uh, transaction there, I guess. Queen check here or here, I just take the queen, he takes back, and then I take the rook. Okay, so he takes. So now if I take the knight, uh, there's still a queen check here, and uh, that, that picks up the rook. So I still can't take the uh, darn knight. Okay, so... Um, I have a check here, and uh, oh no, I don't have a check there. The rook is guarding it. Is there a check? There might be a check from this square. And he's got his knight coming to this square. Hmm, very tricky. Okay, I should I should move before I get. Um, I should move before I get in any more trouble. Check. Okay, so it just goes for simplification. Probably a reasonable thing to do in time trouble. 
let's see so um, the knight here attacks the bishop so I couldn't play my rook here Rook here, check, attacks my king, but I'm going to take... Ah, he wins the uh, pawn. I can't believe he's getting out of this. <laughs> okay, I need to get my uh, bishop off the back rank. Maybe there. Okay, so let's uh, push this pawn so I can... Uh, uh, march up with my king somewhere. Here, let's take that. Check. Check. Okay, so this should be a drawn rick and pawn ending, but uh, let's play it out and see how it goes. There's a lot of pawns still on the board. It's important not to let your king get outflanked. <laughs> And uh, we'll see if my uh, space advantage amounts to something here. Okay, is this one of those positions? I take, he takes, I push. So I'm going to get the last move here. And I need to take. I should take this way because in case he uh, takes back. <clears throat> I want to have the outside pawn. If he doesn't take back... Okay, now it's his turn. So that is uh, a tempo. There's no more tempos left for black, so he's got to go to one side or the other. And if he goes there, I'm going after the pawn. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm, I'm closer. It's nice that these pawns are so far away. Okay, so when he queens, it's going to be on this diagonal. So I don't want to be on this diagonal. I want to be on this. So I'm just going to... Uh, Hopefully this should be an easy win at this point. <clears throat> Famous last words, queen here. He gets one more move. Okay, so what's the trick? The trick is to get in front of the pawn if you can. But if I play my queen here, okay. The other trick is to not lose on time. <laughs> uh, let's, uh, let's give a check. 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 And uh, always pin. You can always pin the pawn when you can't give a check. Creep in with the queen. And uh, force the check. king in front of the pawn. And then you have time to uh, bring your king closer. Check. Right, so the pawn can't move, so you get one move with your king. Pin the pawn. Pin the pawn. Pin the pawn. I guess I should have given a check somewhere in there. Here, how about this check? Check. Check. Move the king one step closer. <laughs> this is why you want increment. <laughs> Check. This would not be playable without increment. I would have lost on time by now. Stalemate. Oh, no. Oh, my. Of course, I have to go to uh, this square. Ah, well, that's the problem with increment, too. Uh, when you're moving so quickly, you can't always uh, find the exact move. But that was uh, completely winning. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm going to upload this and do a postmortem anyway. See you guys later.